Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sanjay Mishra with Taligent, and um, I want to take a few minutes of your time and talk about OpenBook, uh, our billing solution for OpenStack, and uh, uh, talk you through some of the basic functionality. Um, as I go through the solution, I'm going to focus on the two aspects. Uh, I'm actually going to walk through the two UIs that we have. Uh, we have an admin UI, which is targeted towards the service provider uh, administrator or the uh, private cloud admin. And that's the UI that's used to set up rate plans, to, uh, to edit details of uh, customers and resellers and so on, uh, and look at invoice history and, and uh, do some analytics on the data that's being collected. And then uh, with the time remaining for the second part of the demo, I'd like to focus on the customer view into the interface. And so we have a customer UI that uh, lets the end user come in and look at usage and financials uh, by their project, uh, and then also focus on a self-registration component where uh, somebody can actually onboard and self-register and uh, have a project created and, uh, uh, and, and, and get going with OpenStack. So let me walk in, uh, let me log into the admin UI. Uh, and actually, before I do that, let me say a quick prayer to the uh, God of Live demos. Um, I think everyone's happy today, and we should be good, but uh, just in case. So what I'm going to do is just start with what uh, the end product is and um, uh, start with that as the focus. What is an invoice that comes out of OpenBook? Uh, what does it look like? So for a little bit of background, we, um, we have a deep and I want to say almost exclusive focus at the moment on OpenStack. We integrate with Solometer. Uh, we also, at initial uh, integration and setup time, connect with the other APIs, so uh, Keystone, Cinder, Volume, uh, I mean Cinder, Nova, Neutron, and so on. And so when we first integrate into an OpenStack environment, we build a snapshot of what the tenants and their infrastructure uh, are at that point in time, and then we switch over to Solometer, and going uh, entirely through Solometer, uh, we get a history of what provisioning activity has occurred, uh, what state change activity has occurred, and then obviously metrics and utilization data, so then we can use that to build, um, uh, to build a, an invoice and, and, uh, or, or a bill that we present to the customer. So just talking through this uh, at a high level, in terms of producing an invoice for a customer, Pretty much anything that's available to you from Solometer or that is able to be provisioned into an OpenStack environment is available for you to bill on. Um, looking at, at this sample invoice, so we've got categories of infrastructure, instances, instant types, uh, what the rate is, uh, what the billing interval is that I want to charge on, what state the machine is in. And so when I, uh, after this, as I uh, pull up a sample rate plan and show you how that's configured, uh, you have an option of uh, it, it just exists, or it's powered on, or even actually in the context of a VDI integration that we have, is it in use? Is somebody actually logged into the machine? And you can combine these things in a, in a way that uh, makes most sense from a billing perspective from your side. And then obviously, we're keeping track of the actual utilization uh, on a per minute basis. So as a machine gets powered on, powered off, we're uh, monitoring that activity and then building utilization intervals that, uh, that we can bill based on. Uh, scrolling further down, so usage-based charges, uh, you have the ability to collect any metric that comes from Solometer. Uh, most common use cases, obviously, are network traffic, uh, network outgoing bytes, storage container size, and so on. And so being able to take all of those and being able to apply a, a charge to that. And then finally, the volume example shows being able to bill based on an attribute of an entity. So in this case, as part of our regular synchronization, uh, we're collecting a subset of attributes that make sense from a billing perspective. And in the case of volumes, size and type is probably the most likely uh, set of candidates. And so if you uh, have a scenario where you've got multiple types of storage available, you have a different rate for SSD versus uh, just spindle-based uh, storage, uh, we can capture both those metrics and, and, uh, uh, and, and take a uh, look at the size attribute, apply a rate to it, and, and you have a charge. So that's a high-level overview of what uh, the invoice looks like. Um, let me briefly touch on setting up a rate plan and just add a little bit of detail to what uh, the 
specifics of that are. So as I was mentioning, um, rate plans, you have the option of having multiple rate plans within the system. Uh, you can assign rate plans directly to customers, or you can configure rate plans as defaults by uh, some combination of rules. So for example, uh, you can have rate plans uh, that apply to all customers. Uh, there's a default rate plan for all customers. You can use uh, name pattern matching to, uh, to assign rate plans. Or you can just come through and explicitly assign a rate plan to a customer and, and have a one-off billing or a rating scenario in that case. Uh, we also have full support for resellers. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And so uh, you have rate, uh, rate plans that apply to resellers. You have rate plans that apply to customers. And this is how you would configure it. Uh, we have full currency conversion support. So the way that works is there's a, rate, there's a currency that's associated with the rate plan. And then when a re reseller or a customer is configured, there's a currency that is, that's associated with them. So at the time that we produce the invoice, we perform the calculation in the rate plan currency, and then we convert that to the customer currency and present the invoice to them uh, in their local currency. Uh, rate plans have different periods of validity. So you can actually configure a rate plan to be active at some point in the future. And when that time occurs, then the current rate plan gets expired, and the new, new rate plan takes, takes effect, and, and uh, the, the new rates are what are used for the billing. Uh, Feature-based charges, as I was showing in the cases of instances and so on. So being able to take any type of entity that exists within the OpenStack environment and being able to take a look at its state and its billable interval and being able to associate a charge with that, this is where you would set that up. So if you think of it at the highest level, I just want to look at my entities. I want to see, do they exist? Are they powered on? Uh, and then uh, associate a charge with that. So uh, again, in the case of instances, we're uh, regularly synchronizing what the, um, uh, what the instance uh, flavors are in the OpenStack environment and making them available for you to be able to attach a charge to that. Attribute-based billing is uh, going down to another level of detail. So a common use case in this scenario is if the instance is running Windows, then I want to have an additional charge of x per, per hour uh, to cover the licensing fee. So in this case, we're looking at the OpenStack instance config attribute image and, uh, uh, and have an additional charge of 0.05 cents per, per hour uh, if the uh, machine is running Windows. Uh, Usage-based charges, as you would expect, these are uh, the, the, the actual metered consumption. And we support the ability to have either um, a, a simple calculation. So we just go through, take the solometer data that's being received, add it up over the period of time, uh, apply a number to it, and there's a charge. Or we can also do uh, tiered billing. So in this case, uh, the scenario is that we're, we're looking at the total metric that, uh, that we have at the end of the billing period. We find the tier at which it matches and then calculate a charge based on that. The other option with tiered billing is being able to slice it up. So you can say, uh, uh, take, the, take the total measurement, split it up into the actual amounts over these tiers, calculate a, a composite charge that uh, consists of the, um, the value per tier, and then present that as the final charge. Event-based charges, not very common, but uh, you could have scenarios where, uh, say from a support perspective or something, if a certain type of instance gets provisioned and you want to have a, a specific charge associated with that, then you have the ability to take the, uh, the event activity that's occurring uh, and, and attach a charge to that. So those, that's sort of the high level of setting up a, um, uh, a rate plan. Uh, before, so as part of closing this out, let me uh, just walk through resellers and, and customer self-service. Uh, we have a, full, uh, a fully N-tiered reseller model, uh, delegated administration. We have users associated with um, resellers. And so when somebody logs in, uh, they see the customers and activity and so on that's specific to their particular environment. Resellers can set up their own rate plans. Uh, they can charge customers uh, according to whatever scheme makes sense for them. Um, some of the other components, so again, um, you, you have a choice of, uh, of choosing how you want you as the cloud, uh, as a service provider, how you want your uh, resellers to be provisioned. Uh, and you can either charge them by percentage of what the total billing is or by specific rate plans. We support payment processing. So uh, one of the things that uh, can, can uh, be configured as part of the reseller configuration is what the, what the PayPal merchant details are. And so when a customer uh, self-registers, they have the option of choosing uh, whether they want to receive a monthly invoice or want to be billed through PayPal. And we can collect that detail and actually process payment for them. 
And then a little bit of personalization. So we, uh, in an HA proxy kind of environment where you might be exposing uh, reseller-friendly public URLs, we can take that URL and map it into a, uh, a view that's specific for that reseller. So in this case, we have this reseller, green.ch, uh, when the registration page or when the customer portal for that reseller renders, uh, we want to display the, uh, the reseller's logo. And so we have this configured here. So let me switch over to that. Um, as, uh, and, and just in the four seconds that I have remaining, touch on the uh, customer self-registration piece. Uh, so again, this is the branded reseller green.ch page. Uh, I can come in here, self-register. Once I've self-registered, the, uh, there's a project that's created for the user. Uh, the end user can specify their uh, payment details as they wish. And so you know, say they're configured to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to pay on a monthly basis through PayPal, they can set up a pre-authorization. And then for that reseller, we process that payment. And finally, let me just uh, log in as a customer. And so now I've gone through the self-registration. I have a project in, in uh, OpenStack. And as I'm going through, I've, I've received an invoice, and I could log in. Uh, uh, sorry. And so as an end user, this is my view into the environment. Uh, we, we support a couple of additional things other than just finances here. Um, I can look at the details of what the um, what my invoice is. This is a view that's similar to what you saw on the admin UI side. But the goal here is to present as much detail to the end user as possible so they can see exactly what they're being billed on the basis of. Uh, some of the other things that we uh, have included in here are extending sort of the self-service model. So as an end user, uh, if I want to request a, an increase to my quotas, I can come in through here. Uh, we have workflow on the back end of this so that I can request a change. And um, this, this request will route to an administrator optionally for approval. And once it's been approved, it, uh, ag we, we go through the OpenStack APIs and actually make the change uh, for that particular project. And they're up and running. And actually, I said this was the last thing, but I'm going to put one last thing up here. Uh, this is uh, something that's uh, just hot off the presses. And even I'm not brave enough to actually do a live demo with this. So I've taken a screenshot and wanted to present it to you. The, the detail that you just saw in the customer UI, our goal is actually to uh, very soon fold that into Horizon. So with the notion being there's a single pane of glass that uh, the end user comes to. And from that, uh, you know, we add a financials tab. And they can look at what their, uh, their invoice history is. And they, they can request the same quota changes that we just saw uh, over on the other side. And I am now two and a half minutes over, so I'll stop. Uh, thank you very much. We, we have a booth uh, just behind the Canonical guys. If you'd like more information, please stop by and, uh, and, and ask. We'd be happy to talk to you some more about it.